So by applying the automatic color corrections, we can see most of that color cast went away. The nice thing is that is entirely controllable to how much we want, but it's automatically applied. The same goes for when we're adjusting the tonal range. So we can adjust the brightness and contrast completely automatically just within Photoshop without using any actions, without using Lightroom Classic. There's no Adobe Camera Raw that's involved with doing any of these adjustments, no presets, but we can take this a lot further. Because in this episode, I'm going to show you how to do those automatic adjustments in Photoshop. Once again, not requiring any Lightroom Classic, Adobe Camera Raw, no presets, no actions. A lot of the stuff has been overlooked. They're kind of hidden because lately we've had so many new features come into these programs from Adobe to do AI, to be able to add all kinds of masking and other features into Lightroom Classic. But when it comes to color, when it comes to the tonal range, when it comes to geometry, that stuff has been in Photoshop for years and in automated ways to do it that are often overlooked. And these other newer features kind of make that get lost back in the shadows. So let's dive into this really deep and see how to do all these automatic adjustments. We'll first take a look at automatic color corrections, then automatic tonal range corrections, and then we'll also do some automatic geometry, especially when it comes to this image here, which is actually not that much of a problem geometry wise. It's because of some of the flaws in construction. I'm going to dive into that real deep, but once again, none of these will require you to do anything within Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw. There's no actions, no presets. This stuff has been here for a long time. Now you can still use obviously all those other features I do, but this gives you a broader range of tools that you can then choose to use as you see fit. So let's start over with this. You can see there's a couple of adjustment layers here, but what I'm going to do is I'm just going to erase those for right now. Let's just delete those layers and let's start over. So the biggest thing when it comes to adjusting your colors automatically, the features are hidden. They're in two adjustment layers that you can choose. You can use either one. Let's take one of them. Let's go up to layer and then new adjustment layer, and let's pick curves. This is more common because this will then show us the way that the colors are being adjusted. So we can see the properties dialog over here. Let's just drag that out so we can get a better look at what's going on. Make this just a little bit bigger. Now, there is an auto button here that is not what you want to use. Instead, this little thing up here is called the hamburger menu because it looks kind of like a hamburger. So if you click on the hamburger menu in here, you'll see something that says auto options. If you click on auto options, you'll see it automatically make a change based off of these settings down here. You can see the default in this case was enhanced brightness and contrast. That's not what we want. What you want to do is probably use enhance per channel contrast and then possibly find dark and light colors. This usually works really well, the enhance per channel contrast, and then if you also click on snap neutral midtones. As this little dialogue hints, it's the auto color correction options. So this may have pushed it a little bit too far, but once we say OK, we can analyze this and adjust it. So what we have here, you can see this is the tonal range when we go to then shadows and eventually up here into the whites and highlights. And we can see what happened in the tonal range is that once it got past the midtones, it upped the greens and the blues just a little bit. But we also then decrease the reds, but more so in the shadowed portions. So this is going far beyond just adjusting something on your white balance sliders. Uh, temp and tint, that's one thing, but this is adjusting colors more appropriately across the tonal range. And this, by the way, is just one of many different color correction techniques that I teach in my course, Expert Editing. If you're not familiar with that course, I do have a link to it down in the description of this video, as well as links to my other online courses for real estate photography and also for my books on real estate photography as well. So getting back to here though, we can see that we can adjust this as we need to within the curves, but I really don't find that necessary. Instead, you just change the layer opacity. This is at 100%. Let's take that down to about 52%. You can see then it's less, but it's still corrected better than if we didn't have it without it. So you can adjust this as you see fit to the strength that you see fit as you need to to correct those colors. So let's take that back up though to something pretty high, like about let's say 88%, and that looks pretty good. Now, 
adjusting then the tonal range. You could do that in curves, but I really prefer to do that in a levels layer. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and then to levels. And you could name it whatever you'd like. And then within levels, here is where we can press then that auto. So if you press auto at this stage, then it automatically adjusts. You can see the tonal range. It adjusted the levels so that it had the proper amount of contrast that it saw fit. That's one way to do that. But another way to do this also is to go up to layer, new adjustment layer, and brightness and contrast layer. This also has an auto button right here. And all you need to do is click that auto button and it analyzes also brightness and contrast. Now, this is a little bit different because it's not really adjusting the tonal range. It's just globally adjusting brightness and also contrast. You can see the difference between that and the levels layer. Definitely was a little heavy handed when we use the brightness and contrast compared to levels. But there are these two options you can use for the tonal range in combination with then also the curves layer that took care of your color adjustments. But with these adjustments, there are a few things you can do to make life a lot easier. If you'll notice down here on the properties dialog, there are a couple different icons. If we were to be on one of these icons here, if we were to click, for instance, on this one down here, that's gonna reset it. That's gonna undo our changes, so our color changes are no longer there. We can then still go back. We can go to our hamburger menu, go to our auto options, and we can select something once again that we liked that we thought did a pretty good job of evening out those colors. Now, if you wanna see what it looks like before and after, that's what this icon is for here press and hold and it shuts it off temporarily, then you can turn it back on so you can see kind of what it looks like just by pressing and holding. This icon over here is if you were gonna add a clipping mask only to one layer. When we're doing real estate photos, whether it's HDR, whether it's flambient, it really doesn't matter. You should have this just over top of everything. Sometimes this will vary though if you're working on, a, for instance, the sky layer, something that I show in my course on the exterior photography. And this icon over here is just really the same as the icon over here, the eye icon, where you can just turn on and off visibility, but without having to drag your mouse. For instance, if you were to have your properties dialog somewhere over here on the other side of the screen, you don't have to keep going back and forth to then turn the layer on and off as you're working with it. That's just a preference thing, but it's one of those things that just gets hidden so often in Photoshop. So this is just though for the color and also the tonal range, but you don't have to also do this in automatic mode, you can save these as presets. So for instance, let's take a look at another layer. And I'll just shut both of these off for now. I'll go above our top layer here. And now let's add a layer, new adjustment layer, and let's add a hue saturation layer. Now in here, we may want to desaturate overall some of the warmth that's in this image. So a typical way to do that would be, you would click on this little icon here, and then you would click on something here that has that color that's really too warm and it's casting, and you can see it's falling into the reds. Now I can desaturate then that selection, which is desaturating those colors. You can see it's definitely getting rid of that color cast. I can extend that more into, for instance, though the yellow range by doing that, the far ends are feathering, and then the ones in the middle here are the range. So I can have it go from the reds into the yellows. And then I can say that we wanna be able to desaturate by that much. It may look heavy, but once again, you can adjust the uh, opacity of that layer. You can also change some of its mask. But the key here is that if you're going to do this a lot, you save it as a preset, but it's not a preset like you might be used to using in Adobe Camera Raw or Lightroom Classic. Instead, let's go back to the hamburger menu that's on this properties dialog box, and you can see that there's a save and a load preset option. So for instance, if I had saved this, if I said save this as something else, you can see I've already saved one called red, yellow, desatu, and that's the extension that it's looking for the hue saturation preset.
So if I were to back out of here, if I were to get rid of this layer entirely, and I'll just delete that layer, and if I did a new hue saturation layer, I did new adjustment layer and then hue saturation, and then if I went to its hamburger menu and I'll have it load that preset, so it'll load that preset and voila, there are my adjustments just like I had made before. So if these are common things you want to do, then you can add a preset for it. For instance, on our curves adjustment, same thing. I can go over here to its hamburger menu and I can save that as a preset. And I'll call this uh, curves color and we'll have it as that ACV extension that it's looking for. And now it's got that as a preset. Now, if I were to get rid of this and if I made a new curves layer, I'll go layer adjustment and then a new curves layer. Then I can go to the hamburger menu and just load a curves preset and there it is. Once I load that up, those settings are automatically applied. Now that's automatic tonal range and automatic color, but there are other features that you can do automatically and the most common one with real estate photography is geometry. Now, the geometry here looks a little off. It's kind of hard to tell here in this example, which I'll also show, this is more distinct. Something's definitely wrong. But let's start with this one first, just to show some of the reasons why, for instance, this looks off. And then over here, why most of this is an illusion, but some of it is off also. So let's dig into this. And a couple things you can do is one to really help with this in Photoshop is if you're on Windows, you press control and single quote. If you're on a Mac, it should be command single quote. And when you do, you'll have a grid. You can adjust this grid, by the way, if you go to edit and you go to your preferences and then down to guides, grid and slices. And then in here, you can then set how your grid lines should look and what frequency and then how many subdivisions in there. Okay, I'll just cancel out of that. But here now I can zoom in and I can see that looking at this grid, it looks like, like on this door frame over here, that the verticals are correct. When we get over here on some of the wainscoting or wainscoting, depending on what part of the country or country you're from, you can see it doesn't look correct. And the same thing over here. Some of the shadowing that we're seeing here looks like it's off. So we're getting somewhat of a possible illusion that our verticals are off. But some of this is because of construction flaws. So what we can do, you can obviously take this all into Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw, and you can apply a guided alignment, you can do verticals, you can try all that, but there's an easier way to do that while you're still in Photoshop. And what I'll do is just go to the very top layer and I'm going to use the crop tool. And when I go to the crop tool, there's an option that's so often overlooked and that's the straighten option. So if I were to click on straighten, a lot of people think this is just for straightening a horizon like you would in landscape photography but you can also use it for verticals in real estate photography. And what I'm gonna do is this line over here, this crease in the wall looks like it is tilted. So I'm gonna use that as my guide. And just like I would be using then guided upright uh, in Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw, I'm gonna draw a single line though. And I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna to try to align what I think that should be. And it looks like this is following that line. And I can see on that little number, it's showing me negative six degrees, negative two, negative five degrees. When I release that automatically then, you can see it snapped it into place. Now, what I can do then is just click the checkbox up here and now it's adjusted its crop accordingly. So if we look at the history of this before we did that, this is what it looked like. And with our automatic geometry adjustment, this is what it looks like. But that's just the basics of it. Let's take it a lot further to something that will really help save you on problematic geometry like this particular one here. Now applying those same techniques to this particular image, it's a little trickier because there's two things we're up against. One, yes, there is some rotation in here, and there is some problem with the verticals, but there's also some manufacturing flaws in the construction. So once again, we can turn on our grid by doing control and single quote. We can zoom in here and see how things look, and we can see where we would probably have something very level, which would be the windows, and we can see that these window doors, these French doors are definitely rotated. Something's not quite right. Here in the center, there's a little bit of a tilt. When we go here to this side over here, 
doesn't appear to be much, and that's what's deceiving, because also the wainscoting looks like it's vertical, but it's not. That would not be something that a builder would have to make plumb, in other words, straight up and down. So we have to decide on where our verticals are going to come from, and that's where automatic adjustments in Lightroom Classic won't help, but if we do it ourselves, using this technique plus something else on top of it, we can get an even better image. But to compare this, let's first take just a copy of this whole thing, and I'll do Control, Alt, Shift, E, which makes this one layer. Let's take this particular layer and we will try it the way of using Adobe Camera Raw or what would be Lightroom Classic. I'll go up to Filter and I'll go up to Camera Raw Filter. Now in here there are geometry adjustments so I can go there and just click on verticals and that looked like it did a pretty good job so we'll just say OK. So we've got that. Now what I'm going to do is put this temporarily into another document. I'm just going to copy that and make a new document and I'll just paste it there. So now let's go on to the technique so we can compare what we're going to do here to what we would have done if we would have used Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw for correcting the geometry. So in here then we can use that crop tool once again and we can use straighten. And what we'll do is we'll get in here really close so that we can see this window and we'll want to draw our line somewhere along one of these lines of the windows. So I could go in here and I can see that that's tilted quite a bit. You can see it's going down here on the number to about almost negative one. So there is a lot of tilt in there and that adjusted that. We can then zoom out here. With this then, I can decide to crop it a little bit more, something you can't do if you were using just Camera Raw to, and also Lightroom Classic. So I can say, you know what, I want to adjust these sides a little bit bigger. And it doesn't really matter in this case either if we get this little blank space, because this is the trick that I'm also going to show here. So let's say that this is the composition that we wanted, and I'll just click the checkbox here. You could have also hit enter on your keyboard. So already we've gone a little further than what we could have if using Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw because not only could we automatically correct geometry, but we can also expand it. Now to fill this, this is a really cool thing. And it's something that's so often overlooked because nowadays everybody's doing gen fill. But what you can do is you can create a new layer and we'll content aware fill it automatically. So what we'll do is we'll go up to layer and we'll go to new layer. We can name it anything. We'll just name it layer one. So the next thing is we need to select this empty area. And the way that you do that is you would use an old tool known as Magic Wand, the Magic Wand tool. And with Magic Wand, make sure that contiguous is not checked. Make sure that sample all layers is checked. And then just click inside of one of these empty areas. We can see what it did. It selected not just the area I clicked in, but all the other empty areas all the way around the picture. I didn't have to select them at all. So then what I can do is I'm just going to expand this a little bit. So I'm going to go up to the select menu. I'm going to go to modify and I'm going to expand this by just, let's say five pixels. Then I can go up to the edit menu and then to content aware fill. When I select this, I get another window that allows me to select the area that will be filled. A lot of times it'll come up as custom and that's where you'd have to select the area for it to sample. Just make sure you select auto and then you get a preview down here that shows what it's gonna look like. Now the green area here is just showing this is what will be used to sample with it. You can see that it's right here. Now you can output to a new layer, but since we already made a layer that we were working with, then we'll just use current layer. So I'll just say OK, and then you can see it filled that in. I'll do Control D to deselect this, and now you can see that we have this one layer that just has this fill around the edge. And if I turn them all back on, you can see that looks like an entire image. Some of this though was automatically filled and no AI was used. Now let's compare these two images. This is what we did using old school automatic methods for our geometry connection correction and then also for our content aware fill. This is the one that we used in Lightroom Classic or what we did here in Photoshop, Adobe Camera Raw, basically the same thing. So this did a geometry correction that we thought looked pretty good, but when we did it with the other methods, we actually got something better.
But whether you use this method or whether you use the other method that's more traditional using Lightroom Classic or Adobe Camera Raw, you have a variety of choice and different editing techniques that you can decide to use for any job that you think one tool would work better than the other.